I'm in beautiful Mansfield today with Rob Clark from RJ Clark Rural Fencing. The people you need to talk to about your fencing requirements in Mansfield. Rob, how are you today, mate? Very good, Tim. Mate, congratulations. At the Henty Farm Machinery Field Days about a month back, yeah. you were the winner of the Fenceline Solutions strainers. Yeah. Some of the best strainers you'll find on the market. Yeah. And you won these for a very unique knot that I have not seen before, and you just call it the everyday knot. Yeah, that's what we use every day, Tim, yeah. And it was super strong. Let's show us the knot, show us how you tie it, and then I we'll want to put it on the test bench and give it a try out. Absolutely, happy to help. <laughs> Congratulations on the strainers, mate. They're gonna do you years of service. Thank you very much, Tim. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad I ran into you. So Rob, this is the knot. This is a pretty special looking knot. It's got similarities to the Donald knot, but it's so different. Just explain to me a little bit about how this works. Well, yeah, like you said, Tim, it's a very simple knot. Yep. Um, a very strong knot, as we know. Yeah. It starts off with how you would tie your shoelace. Just okay. once around. So we've got the two strained wires here and here. Yep. And you've just gone lazily around here and lazily yep. around here. Like you would tie the first part of your shoelace, yep. Okay. And then we move that to the side. Yep. And we wrap around, just like you would on a termination knot. Yes, okay, so we're actually wrapping this wire first around here yep. rather than that one which has done the twist. Correct. Okay. And then you bring that wire back down in line. Yep. So you've got two wires. And then you wrap that around as I've done here yep and and cut that off just as you normally would with fencing wire yes and then lastly wrap that the opposite way and that's the knot that's so simple so your two bits that are taking the strain are here and here and they're wrapped in opposite directions Correct. so they pull against each other yep. and they tighten up yeah where and does this not normally break mate oh, I, seriously I haven't put it under that much strain yep um, that I've broke it but I'm, I'm tipping it would break on that kink there. It normally breaks on the first kink, yeah. doesn't it? So the interesting thing about this is your kink is rather wide. It's yeah. rather large. Yeah. So you're distributing the load across a larger area on Correct. that kink. Yeah. And then you've got your two twists acting in opposite directions to yeah. each other pulling together, which gives you like a, it's almost, it's almost like a spring crimp, isn't exactly it? Exactly right. And, and that will take the majority of the load before it even gets to that part of the knot. Nice strainers, Tim. Now, Rob, this is a knot that you've seen on some old fences around the Mansfield area. You Correct. call it the everyday knot, but yep. we've been chatting off camera. We've decided to call it, for want of a better word, the Mansfield knot. Yep. If anyone thinks they know the original name for this, yell out in the comments. All right, Tim, so now back in the workshop here. And what we've done to make it easier for everyone to see is we've put your spaghetti over the wires, uh, the one being in the strainers red, the one being on the chain green, as everyone can see. So firstly, Tim, we're going to lift the red wire in our strainers up to about so. Then we're going to bring our green wire that's in the chain underneath. You're going to pull it nice and tight. Keep even weight on that. We're going to grab our red and we're going to start our shoelace tying. Bring so it's in. just like the, the sort of the open loop that you do with a shoelace when you first start tying your shoes. Pretty much. It'll make more sense when I bring this green one down. And this is the green wire that we will start twitching around the unquoted coated wire, sorry, making our crank handle. The secret to making this twitch nice and neat is to pull on the crank handle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, always keep, the wire. keep tension down for at least that first twitch and then it's not so critical. How many times do you twitch around? I like to go four. So now that's this complete. Where, this is where this knot it's a whole new way of tying because we're still not going to involve the red very much, are we? No, now we bring the red down and we place it alongside the unquote, uncoated wire. So the strained wire, yep. 
So it, we've just laid it on the fence here. Yep, right next to the uncoated wire. Make another crank in your green. And then again, same direction. Incorporating the red wire alongside the uncoated and how many times wire. do you twitch around? Three. Three times? And then just twist off and break that. Yep. Hard to do with the coating on the wire. And then we're going to take the red wire, pull down, make our crank handle, and we're just going to go in the opposite direction of so the green. So you're now twitching in the opposite direction to the one which you twitched the green wire in? Correct. And how many twitches are you going to put on this one? I like to go four on this one. So four, three, four. Same thing, twist the wire off and break it. And that is your knot complete. Keep this crossover wide. That's where the strength of the knot is. And then carry on with your twitches. Well, Rob, thanks heaps for showing us what I am from now on going to call a Mansfield knot. Let's see if we can get that name to stick. Yep. Now, this knot was incredibly strong at Henty. So what I'm going to get you to do now is tie me a couple of them. Yep. And I'm going to take them home in this wire, try it out on the test bench. I'm also going to take another section of this wire because this wire, you know, is not the normal roll that I use. And we're going to see what it's brake strain is, yep. then we're going to compare its brake strain to the knot, we're going to find out what percentage of wire strength that knot delivers yep. on our fence stay test bench. Absolutely, fantastic Jim. Alright, let's get into it. Yep. Now we're up to my favourite part of the video where we do science, which means on the Farm Learning Channel, breaking things! We've got our fence stay test bench set up here, we've got a solid end there, we've got a lever end here that's actuated from a bottle jack with a crane scale on it that's being recorded by this camera here so we can all watch along and see how strong this wire that Rob used to tie his knot was. We're going to test his plain unbroken wire, get a baseline strength for the wire, then we're going to test his knot and see how strong it is compared to the strength of the unbroken wire. Right, all we have to do now is stop talking and start cranking. Baseline test is underway. Now this wire it should go to about 540 kilos if it's high tensile. It'll be less than that if it's medium tensile. We're at our recommended strain tension there. Recommended strain tension is typically 1.8 kilonewtons for 2.5 mil. We're up to 300, 400 kilos, 420 kilos. 430, 435, 436. I think we might be dealing with medium tensile here. We're stretching quite a bit now. Still at 430 and I'm cranking away. The wire's just getting thinner. 440, 440, yep, 440 kilos. So I would suggest from that that we're dealing with two and a half mil medium tensile wire. Now let's throw one of his knots on that's tied with this wire and see how strong it is. Then we'll get a percentage knot strength to unbroken wire. Okay, so the wire went to 440 kilos. Let's see where the knot goes as a percentage of wire strength. We're on zero now. Now we're cranking up. 60 odd kilos. Anything over 200 is gonna be okay. 150, 190, 200, 225, 250, 280, 300. This is one strong knot. Remember the wire itself only went to 440. 340, 360, 370, 380 nearly 390 kilos so we only lost about 50 kilos of failed tension between an unbroken wire and the wire with a knot in it this one's a keeper 
Now for those of you who are interested in where the knot has broken under tension, it's actually broken just here, not on the loop, not on the twitches. So it's broken in the first change of direction in the strained wire as it comes through the loop. So the moment you take the wire out of line, that's where it's going to break. It's the same in termination knots and it's the same in figure eights. If you're like me, you've long admired the art and the craftsmanship of a good post and rail fence. You do kilometres of post and rail fencing. We're on a site here with one and a half k's of it. Thereabouts, yeah. You do a fair bit. You reckon anyone can do this with the right tools, equipment and techniques? Absolutely. Time and patience and yeah, you can do it. So guys, we're lucky. Rob's going to show us the tricks and he's going to give us some tips. Put your questions in the comments below and I'll make sure that when I do the video on post and rail fencing with Rob, I ask your questions for you. So get typing, get in the comments. Let's find out more about post and rail fencing from a post and rail master. Cheers, Tim. Thank you. <laughs>